Every morning, I have a look at the BBC News website. Then I do the unforgivable. I click over to Al Jazeera because I can't see the real thing here in democratic Canada. Um, both had stories on Iraq today and both were profoundly depressing and you wonder how in the hell can it get any worse? The US agency in charge of reconstruction says corruption is so bad it's like a second insurgency. Billions and billions of dollars have gone missing. And who suffers? Not the US or British invaders, that's for sure. And for sure as hell it ain't the uh, Iraqi government or whatever they call themselves these days. All their pockets are well lined. For a moment I'd like to go back to a speech I made at a local Rotary Club where I outlined the conditions that help breed terror around the world, anywhere in the world. Um, those conditions comprise a lack of clean water, a lack of food, a lack of shelter. Well, get this. Oxfam has declared 8 million Iraqis are now living in absolute poverty. 4 million are going hungry. The number without clean water has gone up from half when Saddam was toppled to 70% today. Another terrible number. 80% of the population does not have access to safe sanitation. That means they live in their own sewage. And the kids. Yeah, what about the kids? When the US imposed sanctions in 1990, the number of malnourished kids was, went up to 19%. Today, 27% of Iraqi's kids are malnourished. But on a lighter note, well, you see if it's lighter or not. Do you know the military's solution to reducing them, the number of civilian casualties in air raids in Afghanistan? It's sheer genius. They said they'll use smaller bombs smaller bombs. Why not stopping bombs altogether? Then they'd be astounded at how few civilians get killed when they're not being hit by bombs, small or big.